Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am Carex, and we are taking a look at EU4 doing Castile, a Castile run here for complete beginners. This is, of course, to teach the game. We are not teaching how to play Castile. We are, however, playing with all the DLCs. So this is, this does make it a beast of a game. I mean, the default game is complicated enough with the DLCs. There's so many other little systems and mechanics and things. A lot of them are smaller elements. Most of what we're talking about is core principles to the core game with or without DLCs. And then there's a little bit of DLC customization and utility and stuff that we're getting um, specifically from those added features. We're in the diplomatic map mode, which we've talked about it before, that shows Aragon in nice big blue. We have looked at our diplomatic ecosystem. We've looked at our internal economy and stuff. We kind of have a plan of what we're going to do. We know we're trying to build up manpower so that we could ultimately um, get free claims on Granada and get justification for the Reconquista against Granada and push back the Sunnis and, and reclaim this for the Catholics. Um, we are going to try to butter up Portugal as a historical friend and a good Catholic nation to our, to our left here and use Aragon and Portugal in a uni unified Catholic Iberia to beat up and expand into northern Africa where these uh, Berber nations are actually raiding our coasts and, and supporting pirates and all kinds of things and just have a twisted Sunni ideology and anyways of course I'm being you know facetious guys right like we are 1444 playing as Castile this game is there is an element of role playing and of course historical uh, context and stuff like that um, we are trying to build up the um alliance with Navarra so that we can offer them a vassalization but to do this we need to have a huge uh, amount of um we need 190 positive opinion and we looked at that right and it's going to be a race between us and Aragon to do that it's going to be a race with us and Aragon to do that we also talked about potentially wanting to butter up the Pope because we're a good Catholic nation, so we'll want to do that. It looks like we are building a spy network on Morocco. I just also want to say, guys, if you guys are just jumping in um, to episode, we're at episode four here and we're about to unpause the game. We have talked at length, um, some would say maybe for too long, but really we, we've been playing the game, right? We've This is the fourth episode because we've been playing the game. We've been looking at all these important elements of how to get started how to understand the game and building a foundation from the ground up. If you're just joining us, though, because the YouTube algorithm is crazy sometimes and promotes the wrong, you know, doesn't promote the first episode in a series before the others sometimes, um, there is a playlist link down below. But that'll get you to episode one where we start to build the foundation of understanding for complete beginners. Again, if you're an expert at the game, you're not probably going to enjoy this, these videos. They're not going to be of any use to you. Let's unpause the game. Let's go down to speed two. Things are going to be moving fast, okay? And if I unpause with the space bar, things are moving. We have a free diplomat. I'm pausing again. Let's figure out what to do with that free diplomat. We can butter. We can get the royal marriage with Portugal. Okay, that sounds good. Actually, wait a second. Let's actually potentially get the royal marriage. Let's get the royal marriage with Navarra instead. Because remember, it's a race with Navarra. It's a race. Um, we have uh, three days until another diplomat comes back. We have these troops, I believe, that are grouping up with these troops to start drilling here. We have um, we have some ships here, actually, that aren't doing anything, right? We have one heavy ship that we set to protect against pirates in the Seville node. We have six light ships that are protecting trade in the Seville node. These 13 ships aren't really doing anything. We know it's going to be a while before we, we use them. So just like we can reduce maintenance of our armies and our navies, but we don't want to reduce maintenance of our entire... Um, Navy just all together, right? Because we still are um, using some of these ships to protect against pirates and protect trade and stuff like that. We're going to mothball the specific ships that we don't need. These three heavies that are really good in combat and 10 transports, which are, you know, used for transporting dudes around and stuff. And we'll, we'll probably want if we, if we do a war against North Africa, we're going to mothball these. And that means that we're only going to have to pay 50% of their maintenance while they're mothballed. If we ever plan to go to war, we could just unmothball them and bring them back, and that'll be totally fine. Totally fine. So we have a free diplomat, so what do we do with that guy? We have to wait till December 15th in order to ally Navarra. It really is, I can't stress this enough, it is a race. Let's royal marriage um, Portugal. Okay. Let's send someone to butter up the Pope. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm clicking on the papal state, and I just, I admit that I know this just because I've played the game a bunch of times, but the Pope, is, you know, controls Rome, the papal state, Rome over here, and they are sort of, you know, the, the papacy, 
and the papal state is an important center of the of the catholic world and there is an entire system that goes along with that we could become we could actually use our influence with the pope to become the curia controller and get a lot of benefits here that we don't quite understand all these benefits but it makes sense that if we're in charge of the curia then obviously we can throw that that weight around that that political power uh, in rome is is going to help our country um go above and you know above and beyond the other uh, Catholic nations, but also allow us to take special action against the heretics and, and the heathens, the Sunnis as well. And then we can also use our papal influence. We actually are building, by being friends with the Pope, we actually build up a papal influence that we can literally spend to get these things like the manpower recovery speed would be really, really good. That would be really, really good to get that. Um, so that's why we're going over to clicking on the Pope, clicking on diplomacy, going to improve relations and sending a diplomat, diplomat to just be, hey, you know what, that's your job. Just sit over there for a bit. That's your job. What we're doing is we're going to wait till December 5th to try to get the alliance here with Navarra. It looks like Aragon wants a royal marriage. We'll accept that. No issue whatsoever. Can we're keeping an eye on how many diplomatic relations we have. I believe one, two, three, and four. Pope will make four, I think. We are looking for the 15th here. But Mer, uh, Merino Wool. So an event has happened. So these random events just pop up, and sometimes they're random, sometimes they're historical. We can look at the different... Basically, we don't have a choice here. It's just excellent. It's just we get local production efficiency plus 20%, but local development cost is going to be reduced in the entire... What looks to be the Seville node. Is this the right node? Or maybe just a bunch of random provinces and stuff in fact the nobility is going to get a little bit extra land that's actually kind of unfortunate but so basically we've lost actually we've lost some of our crown land but not enough to actually be like a detriment um but we're getting some local production efficiency so that might actually help out the economy for however long that lasts but sometimes those events just pop up and it's like hey a thing happened uh and and sometimes it's a little bit of a bigger thing let's get the alliance with navarra another event has popped up here Nobility is getting some more influence. We don't have a choice. A lot of times you have a choice in those in those situations. We did not have a choice. We need to get an improved relations person going here, which we won't be able to do till the end of January. We're still buttering up the Pope, making them happy. Come over here. We can see that the alliance is not too far away. They have 38 reasons to ally us. We have a strong army. Uh, we have a good opinion. Um, Castile naval strength and, and diplomatic reputation, but they have a neutral attitude towards us and they have too many diplomatic relations as it is. So they already have tons of allies. They don't really want more allies, but they're willing to make an exception for us because they really like us. So we just got to keep working on that. A few months from now and they'll want to ally us. We still have this personal union on monarch death because we got rid of Enrique. What I did over here, guys, was I combined our two 12,000 stacks so that they could be drilling under our one rule, uh, general. We have one single general here. I want that general... And each general has to be assigned to the army. So I made our two armies into one army. Made them into one army so they could train together in Toledo. So they're just training together with our one general. And, and it means that all of these troops are building a military drill. And this is something that's added with the Cradle of Civilization expansion. Okay, so we're butting, buttering up Navarra. And we need to get to 190. 190 before they're going to be okay with uh, with that. Portugal is very close to wanting the alliance. Hmm. I'm almost kind of tempted to pull back the Moroccan spy right now and work on Portugal really quick because I feel like that's a little bit more important, getting that, that alliance going. We can go up to speed three because right now we're, all of our diplomats are busy. Our troops are drilling. Our manpower is recovering. That's one of the important things that we're working on right now. Our navies are protecting trade where it's relevant. Some of our navies are just sort of mothballed because they're not really doing anything that we care about. An outrageous claim to our throne. Whoa! Wait, what? Wait a second. The king of Aragon has laid an outrageous claim to our throne. If our beloved ruler should die without an heir, they might form a personal union with us. We can avoid this by maintaining a higher prestige than theirs. Ooh. Ooh. So prestige is now important. Interesting. So Aragon has claimed our throne. They're still allied with us, but they've claimed our throne. <laughs> so Aragon is just like, hey, dude, <laughs> like if you don't have a legitimate ruler to take over, 
if your ruler dies, like we're going to assume that we're more legitimate than you, basically, right? That's interesting, though. I mean, we knew that was going to happen because it tells us here that now, right? It tells us here now. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. This is a 5-3, a noble. We lose prestige if we do this, but we get a new... We lose prestige no matter what. Although this is a trade efficiency. Following the orthodox faith. So basically we have a... We have a event here. And this one's actually going to give us an heir. Right? Basically our leader is going to go off, have a party and uh and produce an heir at this party that's not really completely legitimate it's going to give us a weak claim but it is and it's going to lose us some prestige to to accept this person as our heir but guess what a five three two is way the heck better than a one one two way the heck better than a one one two a weak claim to, a weak claim to the throne does negatively affect their legitimacy and their ability to actually secure the throne um losing prestige is also not good but this is someone of the uh, this is someone of the same dynasty as our own family, so I think we want to potentially do that. The half cost level one trader is kind of an interesting idea too. But I think you know what a five three two. I think we do that. I think we take the five three two. A weak claim that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. We have a disaster brewing, Castilian civil war, and that is because. Uh, Wait, what? Wait a second. One of the following must be true. Is the lesser partner in a personal union Castile's government? Okay, wait a second. What's going on here? Stability less than one. Okay, we can change that. Current ruler has uh, administrative skill less than two. So this is a personal, this is a disaster. Is the lesser partner in a personal union? Hmm. Not good. Not good. So we need to boost our stability. We need to boost our stability. Uh, we need uh, 130 admin points to do that, and we only have 70. Can we actually focus on admin? We could. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to, well, hmm, this is tricky. So I'm going to deselect. I'm going to deselect military so that we can get a little bit more on admin. I don't want to double down on admin or reduce military by too much. Um, so we're going to deselect the focus that was focusing on military, that was pulling from diplomatic and uh, administrative. And we're going to try to get a stability here because that's going to slow down the rate of this quite a bit. But unfortunately, and this guy's 40 years old. This guy's only, this guy can't take over. I mean, the queen could take over, but hmm. Has lower than less than two. So the queen would count. The queen would count. We are letting time just run at a, at a slow pace here. I'm just trying to build up a little bit of admin so we can spend this to get stability. I, you wouldn't usually spend stability in this way. We're trying to get the the vassalization over Navarra. They, they'll do it, but we got to get them up to 190. That's taking its sweet time there. Let's pull this diplomat back. Hope that Portugal would be willing to take the alliance, and they will. That is going to upset Aragon slightly. Slightly. Uh, the Pope... I think we have room for one more diplomatic relationship. We want it for the Pope. We're at 39 positive reasons and 40 negative reasons. We're very, very close. We're working on the Pope that is very, very close to happening. What I don't quite understand is why exactly... They went with they shall uh, follow Alfonso's last testament as their choice of action. Ooh, Naples is broken free. Naples is broken free. But it looks like Navarra just got scooped up by Aragon. So an event happened. Navarra, Navarra got scooped up by Aragon. It looks like uh, Aragon does not... The funny thing is Aragon, you know what? We could claim your throne, bro. Um, if we had more prestige than Aragon, we could claim their throne because they have no legal heir. We have male and a male here. They have a male ruler, but if they get a female heir, then that's going to go boom. That's going to be Iberian wedding material right there. 
So that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping that there's eventually going to be a ruler that is female on one throne and a, a male ruler on the other throne, and that will actually cause the historical um, Iberian wedding between Castile and Aragon that allows for the paving of, of the way to, to Spain. Um, France actually here looks like they're actually in a war right now against England. France and England are at war. We can go into the diplomatic mode, click on them. It shows England in red. Scotland's actually fighting in that. So it's France, Scotland, Provence. France, of course, is likely to win in mainland Europe, but it looks like England's probably going to come up here and beat up Scotland quite a bit. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how long that war goes. We're kind of just hoping our manpower recover. We're at about 33% manpower recovery. And we know that we need 60%. We know that we need 60%. Oh, that's interesting to me. It says one of the following must be true. Either Navy at 100% or Army at 100%. Okay, well, we don't want to do Army because we can't afford that. What we instead need to do is we need to be building up our Naval Force Limit. Yeah, so we totally, we have the money to do that. We have the sailors. Let's go into the production. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the production. I misread that mission, guys. We're going to go here and make barks because barks will contribute to our light trade. We already have a pretty powerful, like, heavy heavy ship fleet. It's no issue there. Um, we can see that it looks like this mission is going, or this, this event is going to negatively affect this province potentially with some unrest. Now, if I click on this problem, we haven't talked about unrest because we haven't really had any unrest issues. This unrest in this province is negative 6.6% because of tolerance and legitimacy and all these other positive factors. So there's actually no reason why this is actually going to um, cause any trouble because five plus negative six is still negative, negative. There's not going to be any unrest there. Um, we could actually get a little bit of papal influence, but it does say it'll improve, uh, increase the reform desire. We don't really want to do that as a good Catholic nation. Reform desire is like a meta level thing that's going on in all of Europe where uh, different acts are that nations are taking are increasing the reform desire, and this gets us closer to the Protestant Reformation. We kind of don't want to do that, to be honest. Pope, how are you feeling, dude? See, Pope is, has pushed the goalpost a little bit further now. Um, we have 42 reasons they will, but instead of negative 40, now negative 42. They don't like the fact that we don't have a strong navy. There we go. The alliance is there. We, go. we just need one more month. We got the alliance with the Pope. Good, good, good. Alliance with the Pope. Now, I'm a little bit worried here. Now, buttering up with Navarra is pointless because Navarra is now a subject nation. Let's go back to actually building up a, a claim. So I'm, I'm right-clicking to cancel the diplomats, guys. Right-clicking to cancel the diplomats. I'm clicking on Morocco. doesn't matter where I click. Go to Diplomacy. Scroll back down to Covert Actions, and I'm building that spy network that we're working on earlier with the same justification we were working on it earlier. We have 100 ducats. Um, don't know what we could do with that 100 ducats right this second. It's good to just accumulate it. Eventually, once we get technologies, we'll be able to build buildings. Buildings cost about 100 ducats. The lower level buildings, like the temples, cost 100 ducats. So we are going to want to... There's going to be a lot of things that we can spend money on. Alternatively, we can also upgrade our trade centers. Like Toledo is a level 1 trade center. We can come in here and upgrade this for 200 ducats. And that'll increase our, our trade influence over the Seville region. Very, very good. So we are going to want to do that. Oh, it looks like Granada has some rebels popping up here. They have some pretender rebels. Granada only has 4,000 troops. I mean, this is this is looking like, like these guys are going to be a problem. This is 9,000 rebels that have sieged down a province that is a mothballed fort. That's intense. So this is a fortification here. But it doesn't look like they're garrisoning it. This is a castle, but they're not paying. Oh, they accepted? Hmm. I guess they just accepted the pretenders. So now they have a 1 point zero. Poor guy. Poor guy. Pretenders basically just try to take over the country and change your, your leadership, um, which to be fair would be amazing right now. We have to wait 15 years. I want one stability. We're boosting at one because that's going to slow down the rate at which this climbs, but it's still going to be climbing pretty quickly. I think, does it stop if we go to war? Does it stop? It might stop if we go to war. I'm not sure. Family ties. Okay. Things going on with Aragon there. Right on. We'll do it. Uh, nothing. No choices here, right, guys? No choices. Just uh, lack of demand for crystal. We're going to lose some uh, goods production in a certain area. Just sort of an event has happened that affects a particular trade good. 
and and that's kind of that i mean things are happening right we've solidified our alliance network so we got blue here we got the pope we got aragon we got portugal unfortunately we lost navarra that's no problem because once we take over aragon we'll then take over navarra by extension um the thing is we could try to butter up um naples because naples is someone that is not is our dynasty naples is our dynasty they have no legal heir um i think it would absolutely make sense to try and butter up naples the only problem is they are rivaled with aragon hmm. they are rivaled with aragon but they have no enemies yeah i would like to uh, i'd like to work on on naples i think i think that would make a lot of sense you know what, let's keep working on the Pope. I, let's shuffle um, the one that was working on Aragon to the Pope. Aragon's fine. Aragon's a big boy. He, uh, <laughs> he's... <laughs> I'm teasing, but Aragon is not going to be... Is, is not upset with our alliance just because... Just because we're allied to Portugal. He'll he'll deal with it, right? He doesn't like Portugal, but he's going to deal with it. Um, if, he, if we ally Naples, that could be a problem, but I want to I want to try to get this alliance with Naples. I want to try. Because Naples is our dynasty, and that could allow, that could pave the way for us to be able to um, pers pers reconnect that personal union. So the interesting thing is we have uh, light ships that are just built. We can add them to the node to help protect trade in Seville. So they'll just rejoin with our other navy. Eventually they'll just sort of join together with the other navy. Um, here, the, the, the six and then the three should join up into a one, one group of nine. Yeah, we're not focused on anything here. We can't change this for another 20 years, which is totally fine. Um, improve relations minus 20%. That's kind of a bummer. That's a, that's a really nice stat. So our, our ruler is just one. The second is really just not that amazing, unfortunately. Enrique was worse, though, right? It is zero, zero, zero. It's totally worse. But what we did kind of did create a little bit of a hiccup. And it looks like... To be honest, I don't know exactly why this has happened. I think we'll be able to survive this. We can actually get an unrest guy here to help with that. I don't think this would actually cause unrest. I don't know exactly what this is. When this happens, when that actually happens, I don't know exactly what that's going to mean. Here's the interesting thing. We are not nearly at the 60% man. Well, we're actually coming up to 50%. We have one of these done. Oh no, we do need to get up to 100% forest land. Hmm. The truce is expired with with um, Granada. We do need to get up to 100% forest land. That's going to take forever. I think. Because we have a large forest land, right? We need 10,000 more troops. That's going to be 10,000 manpower. So that's going to put us even further behind on beating up Granada. And these permanent claims are really nice. I guess we got to do this the old-fashioned way, guys. Let's get a let's get a claim on um, We have to think about where we okay, so we, we have spy network with Morocco. We haven't talked about this yet. We have a 35 spy network with Morocco. We can come down here and make a claim on Morocco. So it's like what province do we want? Well this province kinda well, we're already connected to that sea tile. Tangiers is a it would be a relatively easy province to take because uh, it's right connected to Portugal's land. Yeah, honestly, I think we potentially just get the, uh, the claim on Morocco there. Let's let's pull this. We have a so now we have a justification for war. If we click on Morocco and we go to the war tab, we can see boom, we can attack Morocco. Granada would actually be a part of that war as well. Uh, Granada would be part of the war. Who else is Granada allied? We haven't actually checked on it. They've allied Tunis and Morocco, but Morocco is only allied Granada. Only allied Granada. So if we attack Morocco, it could be an interesting way to destabilize. Uh, if we attack Morocco, it would be an interesting way to destabilize Granada. We have that disaster that's brewing, and it, is, it looks like it is going to happen. It is going to happen in a few years. Um, I don't know if war is going to prevent that from triggering, it might like everybody might sort of rally around when we're at war we'll have to see 
but we actually do have a reason to attack. The other thing we can do that's actually kind of interesting is we can look and see, okay, Morocco actually has these different, as we, when we, when we go to declare war on Morocco, we can see what their enemy alliance looks like here. And we can see that they have these different dudes down here. And it looks like for the most part, actually, all these guys down here are subjects of Morocco. So it's good to note, it's good to keep these in mind. These are subjects of Morocco, and they're relatively loyal. We can see here it's a vassal, and they're a loyal vassal. If they were a disloyal vassal, we could use that to our advantage. We could use that to our advantage. Attacking Morocco would be pretty intense. Um, in terms of the favors that we have with Portugal, so we haven't talked about favor systems. So if I, here, I'm flipping menus a little bit, but, but really I'm just kind of like still trying to t walk through this kind of slowly. If we click on Morocco and we go to Diplomacy, we go to Screen. We can see that our allies, so we've looked at the enemies, but let's look at our allies. The Pope won't join. That's big X. No way. Pope doesn't owe us any favors. It's a distant war, and the Pope is malevolent. Uh, so they're just less likely to join wars in general, or at least less likely to help us out. So here we can see that Portugal won't join just standard because we don't owe them any favors, but they do kind of have a desire to other than the favor system. So what we could do is we could promise them land. I could promise them land and then they'll want to join. Same with Aragon. We can promise Aragon land and then we can allow them to join. What does Aragon actually want? And we can ch check and see what these countries want by clicking on Portugal and going to their diplom diplomacy screen and go to diplomatic feedback. And we can see, oh, they want all this. I mean, this is all like deep red. This is of vital interest. Portugal believes this land to be of vital interest to them. This is like of strategic interest. Um, if we click on Aragon now, we can see they want this province here desperately. But they wouldn't mind getting these provinces either. So essentially, these are obviously provinces that we want too. And we can go here and we, we, we're we showing them that, hey, we want this one because we have a claim on it. But I could go here and be like, hey, I want all this too. I want all this too. If we now tell them that we want that, we go here... Aragon's still willing to join for whatever reason, even though for the most part we want the same land that they want. Maybe they just think there's enough to go around, I guess. Um, but we could promise them land and either give them land or just ignore them in the in the peace deal. But it is something that we have to worry about. Otherwise, to get favors, though, we haven't talked about favors, but to build favors, you're just basically waiting a certain amount of time. We get one favor per year with Aragon. So just by being in a healthy alliance... We're gaining favors over time, just, you know, helping them out in little ways and here and there and whatever. And we're building up these favors and they're building up favors with us. We're getting one favor with Portugal. We're getting one favor with Aragon. Likely that per Portugal is not gaining one favor with us per year. We're a much more, we're a bigger, more powerful nation. Portugal is likely getting less favors with us on a yearly basis. They're probably getting a favor every two years because we're like twice as powerful as them, kind of, sort of. Um... Basically, that just means that a small nation like Navarra can't build up favors with Aragon very quickly at all. It could take multiple years to get a single favor. So Navarra can't exploit the fact that Aragon's their buddy to do aggressive wars, right? To do aggressive wars, you need favors built up. That takes longer if you're trying to get favors with bigger nations, more powerful nations. It's quicker if you're trying to get favors with nations that are smaller than you. And that's kind of just how that goes. Man, we're kind of in a weird situation here because... We either need to build up 10,000 more troops and just get a really good juicy war on Granada. Or we need to attack Morocco and we would win that war, but it'd be kind of a tricky war. Uh, we could do it alone or we could do it with help um, from Portugal or Aragon, but we don't really have a good foothold in Northern Africa without Portugal's help at least. Um, I don't know. We're kind of in a tricky situation here, guys. I think we're going to take a pause here. And, and and think about this here thanks everybody for watching i will see you guys in the next one <laughs> and we'll be back to continue as castile and what has actually been kind of an interesting diplomatic start but also kind of a slower start um, but the truce is up with granada so war against granada is a possibility uh, thanks everybody for watching i'll see you guys in the next one